My name is J.H. Palmer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Picketic. Um, if you haven't heard about Picketic, it's an online ticketing company. What makes us completely different than any other ticketing company in the world is we offer our platform completely for free. And it's pretty exciting times for us right now is that we just hit $10 million in sales. Yeah, yeah. Forecasting, and we want to try and hit $45 million this year. Now, we could not have done that without dog fooding. And that's the topic of the title. What we're going to be talking today is dog fooding. Now, what is dog fooding? In the essence, dog fooding, there's two simple things of how I can easily explain this. Number one, dog fooding is eating your own dog food, is using your own product. Second thing it is, is that your community using your own product. So let me tell you a little bit of how I learned about this and how we did it. Our journey started in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Yes, tech heavy. <laughs> Saskatoon, right? Started there, there's no way that we could have done anything if we didn't have our, our local community use us. We did about a million dollars in sales in there. That's because early adopters, extreme users started using our product. We then got a lot, about, a lot of traction. We then moved from Saskatoon to San Francisco. From San Francisco, holy shit, did we ever learn about what dog fooding is like. Those people go out of their way to go out there and help you. How can I help you? It's a freaking bubble there, almost to a fact that it's like they're going way too far. Then we got accepted to an accelerator in Toronto, Highline. You want to talk about somebody that gives you an unfair competitive advantage? Mentors, advisors, they go out of their way to help you. That's when I really heard the expression dog fooding. The reason why is they yelled it at us, dog food, eat your own dog food. Then we went to New York, and I'm telling you, here's something different. Is when we're in New York, it's called Silicon Alley, when we're down there, oh, in the subways, they had pictures of founders in there. They highlighted them, made in NYC. You want to talk about going out there and dog fooding? That's how I learned it. Then I came out down here to Vancouver, and holy shit, did our product take off. It's because early adopters, users started using us. We end up doing an event. I'll give you an example. BC Tech Summit that happened last week. They end up going out there, and they, started, and they decided that they wanted to use BC Tech, used our product. Two weeks later, they came, had lunch with us, and they told us, hey, that part was good. This part is shit. We're opened in Australia. We're open in Australia. Uh, in different parts of Europe, those people won't tell us. They won't give us iterative feedback. Why is that important? It's because startups suck. They're fucking hard. They are. Paul Graham, I don't know if you know of him, Y Combinator, this, you may, he, 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 this, this chart, if you haven't seen it, it's called the process. Google it. Basically, this is what startups are like. You get into TechCrunch, which we've been a couple times, we think we're gonna make a million bucks. We're in TC, whoa, it's on like Donkey Kong, no. This is the process. It's this iteration, pro this, this oh, roller coaster of crap. Right? And it's awesome at the exact same time. The only way that we're going to get through that is through iterative process and feedback and people using our product. There's other competitors that we have out there that have raised a couple hundred million dollars. You could be using them. The only way that we're going to go out there and take over the world is if people in our own backyard use us, feel us, touch us. Now, why should you care? Right? I'm telling you exactly why I, why I, what works for me, entrepreneur, right? But this is about ecosystem and this helps us everywhere. Dog fooding helps everything and everybody in this room because the support, we want new funding to come into to Vancouver and the ecosystem. When there's startups that go out there and they kick it and they know how to do it, that brings in new capital. That helps out and helps bring in new jobs from accountants. If you ever heard of, uh, oh, the, I, won't, I won't get into that right now, but it helps out accountants, new funding, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next thing is talent. You might not be interested in startups, but maybe someday you want to work for Unbounce because, hey, they have a good space and they give away free beer. The only way that these companies go out there and they pay a high wage, they can go out there and exceed is if they get passed through that whole shitty process that we talked about. And that's what how... What, what, hey. That's what, how, how we go out there and build ecosystems. So when you're going out there and you're dog fooding and when you're eating your own dog food, not, not only are you helping out startups like ourselves, you're helping yourself and you're helping our own ecosystems because it's going to take us at least 20 years to go out there and build an ecosystem that kicks ass. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is J.H. Palmer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Picketic. Thank you very much. <laughs> a a any questions? Questions for yeah. Jay? Oh, go ahead. 
you talk about doing things in your own backyard, but it looks like you had like five or six backyards. So how do you um, how do you reconcile that? Sure. Um, in in Saskatoon, we didn't have the foundational standpoint of knowing about how to go out there and differentiate between a, a stock option shuffle. What's the difference between a, a price round and equity? What's a note? How to go out there and do vesting schedules on 1 to 48 with a cliff? What's the signaling? And what does signaling mean in order to go out there in our next round? All those different aspects. So going through those different aspects of going through the ecosystems was an opportunity for us to learn and go out there and build shops. Because those aren't things. When you go down to the Valley, you have the Harvard kids. You have the Stanford kids. When you go down to the Valley for the Canadians, we have the C100. If you don't know about it, Google it because it's freaking awesome. All right? That's what that's what we went in through all that process. Why do we end up in, in in Vancouver? And I'm going to talk about this really quickly. Is the power of mentorship. We had most of our funding come to the East Coast. Press was talking about where you're going to move. We're all our founders are all around the table, nervous about where where are we going to move? What are we going to do? And then a mentor came in and he looked at us and he said, "Okay, what's the problem, boys?" And we were like, we don't know, should we go to Vancouver? Should we go to, where should we go? And then he come and he looked at us. He goes, have you guys talked to your wives and your girlfriends? And we're like, no. And he's like, you guys are fucking idiots. Go home. Talk to your partners. And then our partners, and I was having a child. I have a two and a half year old child, a child right now. We want him to make sure that he's Canadian. They decided they wanted to come to Vancouver. I wrote a blog that's called How the Valley Can Kill Your Startup that got picked up by VentureBeat and trended around the world, and how Vancouver in Canada gives you a competitive advantage during seed stage. It explains a little bit more of why we did where we did, and also the reasons why we went where we had to go through the necess necessity of Saskatchewan. They don't teach you this stuff. Questions. All right. In the back again. Good job. Thank you. Uh, great presentation, lots of energy. Thank you. Um, I was the last guy, so I had to come with it. <laughs> you know, that, that's how I should be, uh, and on a high note. Uh, I have a question regarding the ticketing market. Uh, I know even the big players out there, even Ticketmaster has about 2% share mm -hmm. uh, in terms of number of tickets that they, you know, process. Um, do you think it's more because you have to be location-based, as you guys said, like you guys move from, you know, San Fran to, you know, to Vancouver, to Saskatchewan, and do you think that's the big hurdle, or it's more like, um, the market is too defragmented for someone to go after all of it. Okay, so I don't know the question. Like, I'll, t I'll answer the best that I can answer it. Um, there's two different markets. You know, when you look at uh, Ticketmaster, they're arena style in terms of what they do. So if you want an arena in a seat, subsection 48, that's where they do. We're the general assembly market in terms of what we do. I'll tell you exactly how we think that we're going to go out there and disrupt the market, and I guess good product and value wins. What we do is we give our product away for free for on the consumer market. That's just a lead gen to go out there and get people into our product to a pro model, but to API for events. Our vision is to go out there and have API for events and ticketing everywhere by API. So does that mean that th it's dependent on location? No, it just depends that can we go out there and provide value that nobody else does. Something that they've taught us in the Valley is build something that's incredibly stupidly big and that's kind of where we, where we went with it. So to answer your question, does, that, does, does all those areas help us? Or it, I don't think it does, the education we learned to it. The only time it's helpful to be in different places is if you had to be close to a customer. I'm not sure if I answered your question properly, but I just gave you a little bit of a, an open window in terms of how we think. Awesome. Any other questions for Jay? Last questions of the night. Jay's really, really nice guy. You guys should ask him some questions. He's got a lot of knowledge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's exhausted yeah. saying yes to that. Uh, if we had to start up over, where do we start? Number one, I would tell anybody who's new into the startup game is to go out there and don't start a startup. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't start a startup. And this is what the advice I'd give you is work for a startup that's five employees or less. Learn the grind, learn the hustle, have five jobs at once. Second thing I would tell you is, is freaking own a freaking problem. This shit has to keep you up at night. When you're in the shower and you really got to feel it, own it, understand it. Because this business, it isn't easy. We hear about like the, the billion dollar to rise. 95% of our startups fail. 
and I'm not trying to be depressing here or anything like that. I'm just saying is that the ones when you own it and it keeps you up at night and you really feel it, that's what I do. So the advice I would give to anybody that potentially is getting into it, especially if they're young and they don't know any, any, what they're doing, go work for a company because there's more to start up than just product. There's, oh, there's processes, there's signaling, there's fundraising, there's all these different things that you need to do. There's, you want to buy a watch, you got to learn how to sell, right? And then on top of that is that product, you got to own it. You got to live it. You got to experience it because if you don't, right? And the last thing I would do is, is that when you get into this game, think freaking big. And when you think big, squash it down, piss on it, put your foot on it, and then think huge. That was so poetic as your ending notes there. Yeah, give a hand for Jay.